Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to another reaction video. And it feels so nice to be back at the desk, sitting down with you guys, reacting to some videos. And today, I'm going to be reacting to Darko's explanation of Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted, which, if you have not seen my playthrough of the game, I highly recommend you go see it. It is super, super cool, and I love that game to bits. So... <laughs> I really don't know what else to say here. Um, well, I, well, I guess while I'm here, I might as well um, announce that I am currently working on a help wanted theory of my own. It's going to take a while to make because I'm still writing the script at the moment. And then after that, I got to record, got to make the video, and then I got to post it. So it won't be up soon, but hopefully it'll, you know, I'm trying to get it done as fast as I can because... Yeah, loads of people are just releasing their theories, so I want to try and get mine out there as well before Scott comes and confirms some things or if he denies some things. Which, by the way, I just realized, nope, this way, I have not put the boxes back up. <laughs> you may be wondering why the Monopoly boxes aren't there. That's because I actually had to use them to make my tripod high enough <laughs> so... You guys can see my face during the Help Wanted videos. They're actually, like, my tripod is on my desk, and on the desk is all the boxes, and on the boxes are the tripod, because I had to make it tall enough so you guys could see my face while I'm standing up. So that's why they're not there. They will be back soon, um, but once, you know, I'm just, right now i got to make sure, am I done with Help Wanted? Which is no, the answer is no, because I still have to get all of the achievements and the rest of the stuff in the um, prize counter. And then I have a few other ideas, but for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. We're reacting to Darko's explanation of Help Wanted. I've got a theory of my own I'm currently working on, and we are not done with Help Wanted. But we have gotten the ending, so if you haven't seen the ending, you should probably go watch a video on it, because I'm sure that Darko's video is going to explain it, and it's going to contain lots of spoilers. However, this video is also 50 minutes long, which is a lot longer than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like 20 minutes at the most. It's actually more than double that. So let's not waste any more time, and let's react to Darko's explanation of Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted. Here we go. What's going on, guys? Dorko back again. Hope you're fantastic. Today. Sup, man? Welcome to a video about the Five Nights at Freddy's VR. <laughs> Feels story. so good to watch Dorko. On a break, okay. I know. I wrote. Oh, he made it on his break. Um, about the story, and I just wanted to talk about it with you guys. It's not essentially a theory video because I don't really do those because I never want to give you guys a straight point. Uh, with Five Nights at Freddy's, especially this one, by the way, because things get really complicated. Oh but my god, yes. Ideas for you to think about to make so complicated. Judgment on the, the tapes, game. the ending, Most everything. The are fairly obvious. There are some things that you can decide what you think. I'm going to talk about the tapes, and I'm going to talk about the backstory of the game, and let's just go with it, okay? Oh, yeah, I'm holding my microphone because I am on holiday, and <laughs> it's not going to be like a normal video, so you'll probably hear background noise. Obviously, I'm in a different atmosphere, different room, um, but yeah. So Man, I could never record on vacations. Released, Scott put some key little details hidden in uh, the website. So Scott always does this, but for this game, there was really, really important ones that now make sense. Remember Jeremy. Jeremy. Don't listen to the lies. We let some or them decide and remember Jeremy. We now know who Jeremy is in the game. Again, I'm going to talk about it. But we let something inside. Again, you will is now explained, and I'll talk Why about that. Why is it that. tapping my nose? Obvious, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. As soon as we start the game... Hey, he's got footage for it as well. That's awesome. Talking with Hand Unit, a.k.a basically the commentator of the game. The reason why this game was created was to make a laugh and a gag about all of the issues that yep. happened with Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, okay? All the back history. There's the closing of the first one. animatronics being possessed 
all of that <laughs> Scott. Ah, it was just it was just rumors it was all lies haha <laughs> don't, don't don't listen to those <laughs> hey um because you shouldn't listen to them because it was just a joke you know they're just rumors. rumors so that's why we've made this game because it's funny and you know you can experience all those fake rumors and lies in this virtual reality game i just realized this i know i'm not supposed to <laughs> really give my opinion in this video but i i just realized in fnaf 2 Phone guy mentions rumors and speculations. I wonder if that was put in by Scott in this universe to hint towards the motors and all that stuff. Because if so, and who knows, maybe this is a coincidence, but if so, then he has planned this about the games existing in the universe, or at least in the same universe, for years. What? November 2014 is when FNAF 2 came out and if he truly did have that idea all the way back then he has been planning that for over four years which is just crazy I mean, we can make some money too and advertise Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and get some merch money that's basically why they did it guys so Fazbear Entertainment made this virtual reality game hey, I bought merch to make money but to cover up all of the history to do with Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria because all of these bad rumors and negative rumors about the company are obviously going to affect the company. Let's say yep. McDonald's, for example, <laughs> that some guy murdered a bunch of kids in McDonald's basement. Uh, I shouldn't be laughing, but that that face McDonald's though. Costumes. Obviously, people are going to be talking about it all over the world, and some people are not going to go again and buy stuff from McDonald's. Kind of what happened with um like that, and it's kind of the moon. Man I mean, it's a situation. Smart move, I guess, but we all know it's just a lie. The biggest thing that Fazbear Entertainment say it's not true unless there's any evidence that's been found, and you know it's been accepted as evidence to go against Fazbear Entertainment. The thing is about all of this in the past history, guys, is that there's never been enough evidence to convict. Fazbear Entertainment of doing all this bad stuff. Mm. That's what they use it for, you know? To say, guys, there, all, there wasn't enough evidence to say this about us. Just to forget yeah. it. It was just bad rumours. They are a sn game. very sneaky okay. company. I'll go on a little bit more later on with that because it does get interesting. Like Fazbear Entertainment have tried to do this cover-up before, but it failed. And we'll talk about that in a minute with the tapes. So Fazbear Entertainment made these uh, levels, uh, mini-games, all fictional according to them. So you can experience the rumors a very interesting quote that hand unit says is accidental digital consciousness transference you acknowledge that fazbear entertainment is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference your consciousness your mind mm. gets transferred into the game or reverse so something in the game gets transferred into your ah. world, okay remember that so let's go back i know what it's talking about but i'm gonna let him before, explain it but who made the game in the first place the game was made by silver parasol games remember i remember seeing this stuff all over reddit and i was super confused because at the time i thought it was and remember i was trying to stay away from spoilers and all that stuff because i wanted to experience the game myself i thought it was another game company that actually worked on IRL help wanted like Lionsgate and Steelwool Studios But apparently and Doc is gonna explain it. This was a made-up game company To exist in the FNAF universe that was going to make this game But it's very complicated Doc is gonna explain it. I don't know why I'm trying to explain it myself Remember at the start when you open up the game and you see Silver Parasol, that's a fake company in real life. That company doesn't exist in the real world. It exists in the lore of the game. In the Freddy Fazbear universe, Silver Parasol Games was the first people to come on board and make this game. Yeah. Interestingly as well, guys, is that Scott actually had a plan to make a website. This he said on games. It wasn't supposed Reddit. to come out and Scott changed his mind about it. But what I'm trying to say is that this game is fictional and it's really, really cool that they decided to do that. Like actually say that Silver Parasol made the game <laughs> start and stuff and Scott was actually going to make a website to go into it a little bit more. This is where Tape Girl comes in. Tape Girl 
works for Silver Parasol Games. Right. Jeremy works for Silver Parasol Games. And Dale is the boss of Silver Parasol Games, okay? He seems to be the main guy. So is that Jeremy and Type Girl. Tanya? Some of us work for him. And Fazbear Entertainment have paid is Tanya to Tape Girl? this game for them to cover up the rumors of the past, okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, guys, when I talk about the tapes, I'm actually going to talk about the tapes in my own order okay hey. at the start of the game mm. we collect tapes and if you flip the nightmare box you get to listen flip, to those flip. tapes in a secret tape room that she created she created this tape room and she says that the tapes are not in order hello can you hear me whoa what is that background room, okay? that's it's awesome this room isn't a mistake i had to hide these logs away from the core gameplay files in a place that only a beta tester would look, and in a place where the files could be protected. I just really, really hope that the next development team finds this before the game is released to the public. Too late. This game has some kind of malicious code in it that we haven't been able to fully contain or even understand for that matter. We're over budget and out of time. But that's not the reason that we're shutting down. Listen. I have to keep this short so the file size will be small enough to fly under the radar. Mm. There are more. They may not be in order. So I've done a little bit of listening and tried to put them in a little bit of a timeline for you guys, okay? So Fazbear Entertainment something I'd want to Silver try to Parasol do myself. Games to make the VR game. See what I, I can come up with. Because at the end of the day, guys, they're in trouble right now. If you think about it, they've got all these rumors going on about the past. All the past rumors coming into place now and they have to make this game as quick as possible or they're gonna just go bankrupt and collapse okay and obviously the boss of fazbear entertainment doesn't want that to happen and we don't know who the boss is at the moment because we're pretty confident that this game is set after five nights of freddy's sick so william afton is dead henry's dead okay and henry used to be the owner um we think of fazbear entertainment but now mm. he's dead so all of the spirits are dead now it's over okay everybody's dead but it's like fazbear entertainment is still not finished okay even though henry has died and everything's gone it seems like somebody has took over fazbear entertainment to try and reclaim it back and try and build it back up again and try and get rid of all the past rumors and start a new right. so they want it done quickly they want the speed for the game to come out so people just forget about the past a fresh new start and to get lots of money okay so to speed up the process they actually give silver parasol games some old database chips um that they found they were hmm. old like type girl said the drawers have been emptied out someone was here i don't think it was spring cleaning either no there was plastic on the floor yeah the mask someone is gone was definitely here during the night it had to have been the client. I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it, said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't need to program any pathfinding ourselves. It was a budget thing, I guess. It was just junk. Circuit boards and things like that. Looked pretty old. Somehow, though, there was usable code on some of it. It seemed to take hold by itself. Things started changing. But then, he started appearing. Who's he? At least that's what Jeremy said. These circuit boards are really important, guys, because Fazbear Entertainment sent them to Silver Parasol to speed up the process of the game, okay? Because they could scan the circuit boards, which had data on, apparently, that could be infused with the game to make the experience work. So let's say there was a circuit board mm. on the FNAF 1 blueprints of the animatronics or blueprints of the building, and it speeds up the process because they can scan the, ch the chips and everything, and it's then transferred into the game. It's pretty okay. sci-fi and fictional, but you get the idea. Um, it's Remember, guys, this is like not real life, okay? It's sci-fi. Yeah. So they scan the chips and then that data is transferred to the game and it speeds up the process of the game so they don't have to make things because it's already there that would be so nice in real life that, though they actually make a big mistake so scanning the circuit boards actually works but type girl says that something else got inside 
It's like the game drew it in. It's like the circuit boards drew itself into the game, and that was obviously Glitch Trap. Or Is that his name? Hair, or Spring Bonnie, however you want to call him, but I'm going to call him Glitch Trap for now. So Glitch Trap has got himself into the game now, like a virus. He's inside the game. And we know who Glitch Trap is, obviously. Yeah. Glitch Trap is William Afton, okay? But what I'm saying is, is it the spirit of William Afton, or is it like a darkness of William Afton's past, okay? So William Afton is now dead. We know that, okay? Uh, he got burnt alive, and that leads to Ultimate Custom Night when he's in hell and he's getting tortured by the spirits constantly for eternity. Is it that William Afton's spirit has come back and he's in the game now, or is it like... I'm going to try and reference something to you guys. Hmm. Ha kind of like Harry Potter, okay? So the Horcruxes. So Voldemort splits his soul into different objects... And, I don't know, it seems you know, like a bit a, a of a part stretch. Of him is inside an object. Like Tom Riddle's diary had a part of Voldemort inside it, but it was its own entity. Okay? It wasn't Voldemort. It wasn't the real yeah. Voldemort. It was just like a part of his past. It could be something like that where the chip database had a part of William Afton's past, like a dark entity mm. that has been transferred into the game. Another reference could be Star Wars, okay? So Darth Vader's helmet, um, Anakin Skywalker turns to the light side, he's now a good spirit, but the darkness is still inside Darth Vader's helmet, you know? Do you know what I mean? So, my question is now, does this take place after or before Custom Night? And I get what uh, Doc was trying to reference here is that Afton may have like split some of his soul and some of it went to Custom Night and some of it may have gone over to help Wanted. But I don't know, I feel like that seemed like a bit of a stretch and would honestly come out of nowhere because we haven't really seen that at all. We've seen stuff involving souls and melting them together in the fourth closet and closet and all that stuff but i feel like splitting souls across different games I, I don't know how i feel about that in the fnaf universe honestly i feel like it would just come out of nowhere so th but again that is just my opinion obviously um darko has his opinion i have my opinion i'm totally fine with his opinion i think it's very interesting but I, I just don't... I feel like it just would come out of nowhere, honestly. So, and again, I'm not hating on Lewis, but I, I am allowed to have my own opinions. So even though William Afton's spirit is gone, there could still be a dark entity inside the database. Or it could be William Afton's spirit, but we don't know that yet. And Who the knows? first person <clears throat> to notice that something's wrong with the game now was Jeremy. Jeremy was the yep. first tester of Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, okay? Jeremy was the first tester in Silver Parasol games to test the game, um, and it seems like it wasn't called FNAF VR Help Wanted in, in the real world, in this game lore. It was the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience. So Jeremy's hmm. testing the game. He notices something's there. He warns the company about this. He tells Dale about it, like, okay, something's wrong here. Something's been transferred into the game, and it's weird. It doesn't belong in the game. We need to stop. We need to get rid of it, or we need to stop. Dale doesn't listen to him. Okay? Yeah. And he, ca he, t he demands him Unfortunately. to carry on the game. It, it, it's pretty hard, you know. Would you believe Jeremy? I don't know. Uh, it's I'd have to see it for myself. Right? If if you're Honestly. the boss and you're making a game and somebody comes over and says, um, there's something that's been transferred in the game, we need to stop <laughs> development now, what would your reaction be? So nobody listens to Jeremy and he keeps testing the game and then things get more and more, more and more, more and more, more worse for Jeremy. A lot worse for him. Um, so he keeps testing the game and it seems like he starts to go insane. Tate yeah. Girl describes going through... Um, the workplace in the morning doesn't think anybody's there. The supply rooms, lights are on. I came in early that morning. No one else was there. At least that's what I thought. The supply room was lit. I didn't even notice lit. Jeremy standing in the testing room as I walked past. The supply room was so bright. 
glowing from all the way down the hall. She walks past the testing room and Jeremy's there inside um, talking to somebody when nobody else is in the room. So obviously Jeremy is interacting with Glitch Trap now. Yeah. Talking with him. It started uh, to talk. with him. Which again, if you remember at the start of the video, I'll talk about digital consciousness about to happen. And that seems to be happening with Jeremy now. So yeah. after days gone by, um, when Type Girl witnesses what's happened, uh, nothing bad so far, uh, Jeremy again tries to warn Dale for about an hour in his office constantly asking him to stop development something's wrong here now jeremy's pale he looks like he hasn't eaten in days something is really he wrong. probably hasn't he talks about nightmares he's been having at home real real nightmares not like oh hey fusion um i've, I've had a nightmare last night um of a clown chasing me real nightmares where jeremy describes everything what's happened in that nightmare terrified of Damn. what's happened like they were real um, and that's completely different than a dream jeremy complained of nightmares when he came in this morning he wasn't talking about it like someone telling a friend about his dreams though he was pale looked like he hadn't eaten in days he spent an hour talking in dale's office but it didn't look like he was given much sympathy when he came out he went directly back to the testing room. He doesn't even jump anymore. Nothing scares him. He just stands there like he's talking to someone. He's been in Sometimes there. Sometimes he rocks from side to side. So long. We were told to leave him alone. I knew I was in line to do the testing next. They'd been prepping me for it. I guess they knew that Jeremy would need to be replaced soon. Again, Dial doesn't listen and demands him to carry on testing <sighs> with the game. Man. And now. Jeremy's completely gone, okay? He doesn't get jump scared anymore by the jump scares. He, he's just a completely dead person, but still, he's still talking to Glitch Trap now. Could still talking to him and communicating with Glitch Trap. So again, Type Girl goes back in the morning, just like a normal day, and again, the supply closet is there still. Um, with the lights on again mm. and while she's walking down she notices a Halloween mask on the floor with like black ink attached to it there was something that looked like a Halloween mask that I was a bit confused about I didn't understand ink must have spilled it was only then that I heard a shuffle from the testing room and realized Jeremy must be there I went back and peered in the window I couldn't see his face he had the visor covering his head he had ink spilled on himself as well. The front of his shirt looked black in the dark room. He I'm guessing it's not ink. Direction, but I don't think he knew I was there. We don't know what this blank black ink is. Um, but again, she goes to the testing room. Don't this think time it's she ink. sees Jeremy with the VR heads, headset on. But again, with black ink all across his chest. It was dark. So we don't know what this ink is. Because it's dark, it could have been blood. It could have literally been ink. It could have been remnant. It could have been anything. Um, but a lot Don't of think people it was are assuming, guys, that it was blood um, in the dark room. So Jeremy's bleeding. Um, and a very specific thing that Type Girl talks about is a paper guillotine. Have you ever heard of a guillotine paper slicer? It sounds made up. I've got one of those. A piece of office equipment. I didn't even know we had one in the supply room. I guess they're more common at businesses that do a lot of graphic design work. I remember seeing one when I was still in school, and even then, I knew how dangerous it looked. I was always afraid of Pretty losing sure. my finger. That seems so silly now. Jeremy used to do design work. I guess that's how he knew it was there. This paper guillotine was in the supply closet. Interestingly, the supply closet lights were on, okay? You're getting the idea. She also mentions that Jeremy uh, was a design person who worked with guillotines plenty of times. And she says, oh, I guess that's why Jeremy knew where it was. Or I guess that's why Jeremy used it. The really, really interesting part in the guillotine, guys, and again, it seems to be what Jeremy used for something. And we're thinking... Jer a little bit laggy Jeremy's bleeding um, because he used it on himself because of glitch trap so when she's talking about the guillotine is this me am i laggy 
when she's talking about the guillotine, she says Jeremy knew where it was. That's why Jeremy knew where it was. So it's clearly showing using that it. type girl knew what happened to Jeremy, that Jeremy used the guillotine for something, okay, in the future. So because of all this going on, there we go. the dial, it's back. Um, you know, seeing how Jeremy is, they try and find a way to fire him. You can always tell when a company is getting ready to fire someone. They start giving out written warnings for silly things, making sure to build a paper trail and make a case for a firing. Things that normally no one would care about suddenly become grave offenses, all worthy of being written and documented. I guess it works two ways, because it also encourages a person to quit rather than be scrutinized so heavily. I think Jeremy was too far gone to consider that option, though. Yeah. The thing about it is, that I don't think they were going to fire him because of anything he was doing wrong. They just knew he'd seen something. They yeah. needed to discredit him. He was trying to tell he them. talks about um, how companies try and find little details about the worker, you know, oh, they smell. Or, oh, he was <laughs> Foul odor. Odor. Um, to try Tampering with him. animatronics. Um, all those little tiny points build up and then they've got a case to say, well, you've done this and this and this and this and this, you're fired. And that's what she describes, okay? But she says, Jeremy's too far gone to quit now. Because she said, oh, but he can just quit. Usually when that happens, they just quit instead of getting the backlash from, you know, being fired. He's too into but it. Jeremy's too far gone now. Because Jeremy's no gone escape. insane, literally. Jeremy's too far gone to quit himself. Because his, his mind's just completely gone now. Because of Glitch Bonnie slowly possessing him. Slowly taking control. So after this, Type Girl describes um, Dale on the phone about a lawsuit. Okay? Now this is where we kind of know what happened to Jeremy. So Type Girl says something very, very... Gotta remember some of these tapes. Lawsuit. It could have been any lawsuit. Okay, absolutely anything. But this specific detail tells us that the lawsuit is because of what happened to Jeremy. I heard a pretty heated conversation this morning between Dale, our manager, and someone else on the line. It really feels like this project is in trouble. In no small part because of the lawsuit, I'm sure. There has to be a lawsuit. There's no way there isn't. It happened in this building just a few doors down from me. I think it's There's something that, that Jeremy tried to tell us something was wrong. But as a dev team, we all just saw it as a challenge to find what the problem was and fix it. There's something have wrong. Been... I have to go. Uh, I don't know. There has to be a lawsuit. It happened a few doors from my office, obvious, okay? Something happened in that workplace and we know something happened because of what she's been telling us about Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> it's either, guys, that Jeremy did get fired and is doing a lawsuit against Dale because of the abuse of what he's gone through, or he's died. Just thought of something here. And I know, I, I always keep involving myself in this conversation, but I feel like as these things come to me, it's important to address them. Here's my, my mini theory, I guess. The reason why the the main protagonist in FNAF 2 is named Jeremy is to link him, is to link the Jeremy that worked in Paracel Games with these make-believe tales that are the games themselves. So then Jeremy will seem to be wrapped up in all of this, you know, fantasy and sci-fi a video game franchise about the real events that people will think oh it was just Jeremy he's an insane person or something like that and they won't think of oh the company and or the game is weird and creepy and all that stuff it's Jeremy specifically that's that's my little my small little theory <laughs> one of the two but we don't know what happened, okay? Another idea is that Jeremy's mind has been transferred into the game, and the person who is in the prison room could be Jeremy trapped. Yes, the secret ending at the end. <laughs> it seems pretty obvious, guys, that he died, okay? Mm. All these quotes, remember Jeremy, in the game it says, remember Jeremy. 
it seems obvious that Jeremy to remember the original him before he got he's already killed himself okay so Jeremy oh, driven into insanity glitch trap was trying to possess Jeremy he won he beat glitch trap and he managed to you know stop him uh, that would explain why glitch trap is still uh, in the game when we play it because if he had gotten through to Jeremy then he wouldn't be in the game he would have left like tape girl says glitch trap glitch trap wants to escape the game through the person plugged in so i think that is what it is Jeremy stopped the process before it was fully complete and that's why we still see glitch trap in the game a, a little bit he, he stopped glitch trap possessing him by killing himself okay that was the only thing he could do he was too far gone and it's it, it was a last resort for jeremy and we know that glitch trap didn't possess fully possess him and win because he's still in the game when we're hey in the game, <laughs> that's exactly what i there. said so he obviously wasn't look at me guys i can be jeremy, a theorist um either because jeremy was too strong-willed and then he got fired um or he got killed and it it, it is guys it, he has he's he's killed himself okay i know it's a really really deep uh thing yeah. to talk about it, um, especially for fnaf which is all about killing someone actually in the game well i guess we could kind of say that henry killed himself but henry used baby to kill himself so um that's still suicide i guess but i some people don't really count it as that but yeah, even for FNAF, this is a pretty dark subject, a character literally killing themselves. So pretty dark, pretty gruesome, kind of gory, but that's, that's how you tell a story. You got to make it interesting. He did. Um, if he did get fired, Type Girl wouldn't have said, it happened a few doors next to me. He killed himself in the testing room to stop Glitch Trap possessing him. That's why Glitch Trap is still in the game because he hasn't possessed somebody yet. I'm going to talk about the possession right. a little bit later on because that does happen in the game. I've showed you guys what happens yeah. when Glitch Trap tries to merge with us. So, we be because of we this lawsuit become going him. on, Silver Parasol Games Silver Parasol. wants to get rid of it. They've had enough. What happened to Jeremy has put a stop to their development and they want to get rid of the game as quickly as possible. And they pass it on. AKA selling it to another company for them to work on and finish Scott and that games. is what happens guys for a start um, in the game we are playing as a beta tester for this other company yep okay that's what happens I'll go into more detail ooh hmm that may be a bit clever maybe that's why some things in the game aren't in there yet I know Scott's made a post about Showtime and how that's not going to be implemented but he did say that he has um, an idea that he wants to use that button for and also the button on the bottom of the exotic butter's basket. Maybe that's why they're not in the game yet. Is because we are literally, as the player IRL, are playing what is supposed to be a beta version of a game. Maybe that. Maybe that's why. Again, small mini theories. Tell. I want to keep focusing on this bit. But before that happens, Type Girl still has a few days left to continue the work of what Jeremy was doing. So they're selling the they're selling the game to another company, but they have to look like everything's fine. So Tape Girl gets asked by Dale to test the game for a few more days to look like everything's fine, everything's under control. I was told I had three days to finish Jeremy's work, but I know it's just passing the time. They don't really expect me to do everything. No. It's just to keep up appearances until the buyout is complete. We have to look like we have things under control. There's another potential development studio that wants to pick up from here. I wonder who that is. <laughs> to convince them to do it. Against my better judgment, I'm going to do my best to see what's here, make notes of it, and try to isolate where this thing is hiding. At least then, the next person that tests this will have a chance of getting rid of it. Now, because of what Fazbear Entertainment did by sending them a bunch of databases, circuit boards from the past, they actually did a boo boo. Okay, they did a really <laughs> bad thing. Not only they did, did they an oopsie, insert the virus glitch trap into the game, they also had hidden emails leaked 
which Type Girl found out about. Okay, and this is where things go really deep and crazy. <laughs> they lied to us. They, they lied, lied to, to all, all of us. us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer who supposedly made up a bunch of crazy stories that tarnished the brand. But that's uh. not true at all. In their haste to develop this VR game and clear their name, they sent us some things I don't think they intended us to see. Such as a hard drive containing emails between Fazbear Entertainment and a certain indie developer. Oh. Fazbear Entertainment hired the game developer. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attack. I like how you can hear Darko in the background, like, gasping. You can tell he took this straight from his recording. Because you can just hear him going, <gasps> Ooh! To rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. A campaign to discredit everything. So, we've talked about... Fazbear Entertainment trying to make a VR game to cover up all the past. They've done this before, guys, with an indie developer who made <laughs> a bunch of games. <laughs> who could about that be? The story of Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay? An indie developer. That's really interesting, right? Um, again, I'm not going to go into too much like detail because it's really, really confusing. Because we could say that Scott. So, Fazbear Entertainment paid for an indie developer in the past to make a game about the stories, just like they've done now. But those games actually made things a lot more worse, okay? So, these games are about the murders and all the backstory and all the lore, okay, about the story. But that actually made Fazbear Entertainment a lot worse because people played those games and thought, oh, we need to ask questions about this. <laughs> Fazbear Entertainment wanted it just Wait to just, a you know, second. hide the backstory. It was, it's just all fun, it's all fake rumours, don't worry, it's a game. But people wanted to know more about this, and investigations started to come to Vazbear Entertainment. So they stopped it. They completely stopped the indie developer making the games, because people were, you know, investigating now what was going on. And the FNAF VR game was to discredit everything now. So they fired the indie developer, and now they're making a VR game about the games as well that it was all gameception fun. it was all just for fun it was all fake rumors they were all lies okay and they lied at the start they say oh this indie developer is crazy those were all lies don't worry about him don't worry about this indie developer play this game and you'll have a lot of fun and it's all fake don't worry do you know what i mean yeah. so fazbear entertainment are pretty indecisive of what they want to do <laughs> with their with their business so yeah guys at first this is all after everything by the looks of things so after yeah FNAF 6 definitely and everything Fazbear pretty sure Entertainment wanted to hide the rumors it's all a, it's all a lie don't worry uh, let's hire an indie developer to make some games about all this let's get some money as well at the same time you know people aren't going to overreact to it they're just games but people do. So just, and just, rumors just are game. spread around again. So they lose business. So they get rid of the indie developer. Say he's a lawyer. We didn't pay him to make these. He's just a lawyer. This is all fake. And then they cover up everything. Well, try to with the VR game. Okay? And Type Girl finds out. She says, it was all a lie. It's all lies. We've been deceived here. Okay? I know it's complicated, by the way. Don't yep. worry. But I'll do yeah. like, explain like on five summary. Um, at the end. So now Type Girl has three days to just play the game and just see what happens, okay? Remember at this point, Type Girl still hasn't seen Glitch Trap anywhere, okay? She does when she first starts testing the game. Type Girl is playing Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and she sees Glitch Trap down the hallway. I saw it for the first time today. There was a character I could make out who it was standing at the end of the hall. I thought it was just bugged out, so I made a note of it and kept playing. But then it was looking in the window, and not like Chica or Bonnie would. It was like it was actually looking in the window, seeing what I was doing. That's kind of what they do, though. <laughs> she describes it as not as Bonnie as Chica. Doesn't look like Bonnie and Chica to me. It's just staring at me, watching me. This, this shouldn't be in the game. And that's exactly the character 
what Jeremy was talking this about. Is and she instantly knew that's it. That's what I need to get rid of. They know that's snap. the virus. That's glitch trap. That's what killed Jeremy. I need to sort this out and get rid of him as soon as possible. And she tries to. She makes the logs, okay? I've, I'm pretty sure Tape Girl knew she didn't have enough time to get rid of this creature. I think okay? so too, man. She only had a few days, but she knew that when the game is sent to the other company, the beta tester of that other company, us, will kill it for her, okay? Or at least hide it or just try to do something because she hasn't got enough time here. So she makes these tapes for us. She starts off, you know, talking about what's been going on, about the story, about her company, Silver Parasol Games, and what happened to Jeremy. While doing that, she had to make the logs hidden enough for nobody else to see what's going on, okay? So when Dale's looking through the game to see if everything's fine, she wanted to keep the logs hidden so he couldn't see or anybody could see what was going on. So she made the logs hidden and safe. So who would Small enough that? so they go under the radar. If you were a virus in a game, and you felt vulnerable, would you go into the safest part of the game files? You would, okay? That's exactly what Glitchtrap does, okay? Glitchtrap transfers himself from the game into the log files in the game that she has created. And she and says she that, that he and attached it to the happened, tapes. Okay? And she knew. She, type Girl's a smart girl, okay? Today was my last day of beta testing. And the anomaly that I've been seeing is nowhere to be found. But after inspecting some of the files, it seems that it's attached itself to these logs. My logs. That can't be an accident. So now I have to make a choice. Do I leave these logs here for you to find? Or do I try to purge this thing myself by destroying the logs? I've chosen the latter. She knew straight away why Glitchtrap did it. They're hidden, the safe. He's fine, okay? But that actually went to her advantage now. And she simply had the idea to delete the logs. Oh, uh, he's, in the, he's in the logs now. I can delete them. Sadly, she couldn't do that. She couldn't delete the logs because she made the logs so hidden and protected that she couldn't delete she can't, them herself. She can't even delete them. By do it herself. The area to store these logs apart from the game, I effectively gave this thing a safe place to hide itself. It's in here now. I may not be able to delete it, but I might be able to do something else now that it's attached itself. I have an idea. But what she could do, guys, was split apart the log files, okay? Instead of just one file... That's why he's all glitchy. Was, she split the file into 16 parts. I ran a fragmentation program on the area of memory that was storing these logs for you. I effectively broke the files into pieces and broke the anomaly along with it. That means that you won't have my warnings to guide you, but hopefully it also means that this anomaly, this virus, or whatever it is, will remain broken and unable to do more damage. 16 tiny little pieces of glitch trap are now in the game, okay? We're safe. Glitch trap can't do anything now, okay? Glitch trap is now split apart, just like the Horcruxes, guys, okay? <laughs> here we like go that. again. They're all split now, uh -huh. so here we Glitch go trap again. can't do anything anymore, okay? He's too weak to do whatever he wants to do. He needs to be in his full form. He has to have every single form, every single piece together for him to be able to possess someone again, okay? It's not going to happen again. Uh, whatever. And that's why, again, I'm thinking of these things... As I go along, and I'm sorry I interrupt so much, but again, they just kind of come to my mind, and I have to say them. That's why when we get all the logs, um, he finally appears behind the desk, reaches out his hand, and then we have the option to fuse with him. See, it it all starts to make sense once you really think about it, and have an, an expert such as Lewis here to help you feel it. What happened to Jeremy is never going to happen now, because Glitch Trap is completely destroyed basically you try and possess somebody when you've only got a no <laughs> basically <laughs> that's basically it guys okay just see a that's floating a hand what type girl did okay the thing is guys we collected the tapes yep what happened when we collected each type 
See, I told you guys, I'm I'm, I'm a true theorist. Closer, stronger, more visible, and more powerful. We actually rebuild Glitch Trap to his final form. And what does he try to do when we've got all the types? He tries to possess us. He tries to again whip straight from his videos. If we actually fail to flip the switch and kill him, which I'll talk about in a minute. We turn into glitch trap, okay? Well, we fuse we with him. We stage and we look at our hands and we've got glitch trap hand, glitch traps hands, and that's because he's took control of us now. It's a metaphor. Obviously, he's able to leave. We're not possessed by glitch trap now, but in the game law, if that person in the game law, if that happened to them, they'd be possessed, okay? So when I failed to kill glitch trap and I was on stage, then I would now be possessed by glitch trap right now. Okay, in my video, you would have saw me being possessed by Glitch Trap. Okay, Glitch Trap won, and I would have been a really me, weird say. And he could have done whatever he wanted at that point. Okay, so really, really interesting. Um, he tries to like on stage consuming us, and then we him. Okay, we lost, but that obviously doesn't happen because Tape Girl tells us a way to kill him. The the last tape that we get to get to that point tells us a way to kill him yeah there is a way to kill it it wants to escape yeah, that's a really cool to background through someone someone plugged into this game that's you now hey you have to let it begin the process of yep that is you. nay then use the disconnect switch that i've embedded by the main stage let it approach you let it begin to merge with you play the music and flip the switch that will Blip. cause a hard restart of the game and flush the memory, effectively killing it. I hope. I don't know when it will come for you. And then stage, we go into a door. Us. We play the music, aka the stage animatronic performance button, and we flip the switch and press the reset button, and that gets rid of him. And that's what we do. We get rid of him. It seems like there's no <laughs> other ending to this game. People have gone into the game files and everything, and it, there's no other ending, okay? At that point, guys, glitch trap, glitch trap has been erased, and he's been turned into a plushie. The plushie can't do anything, okay? Yep. The plushie is a plushie in the game. <laughs> it can't kill us. It can't harm us. That's it. Glitch trap has been deleted from the game, and what's replaced him is a spring bonnie plushie, okay? And that's basically oh, the summary. And I can talk about um, when we actually kill him that we're in that room. Um, which I'm really confused about, by the way. Don't yeah, I can't explain I, it myself. Really, no clue. You can have many interpretations of that little cutscene. I think the thing to really take away, actually, you can see it right here, is the scratch marks and all like the handprints on it. We were we were clearly trying to escape this place. Um, what this place is, I have no clue. <laughs> um, but. Who knows? MatPet is currently working on a theory about it. Maybe he'll find out what it means, because, you know, he's, he's freaking MatPet. He's got to answer to everything. It's more to show in gaming. But yeah, we're obviously trying to get out of here. Springtrap shushes, shushes us and then goes into the darkness. We could be the player at that point, us, in that room. And we're in a locked room, guys, okay? And it looks like we're on the inside. Because you can clearly see on the wall, there's hand scrape marks on the wall. Yeah. Like other people have been trapped there before. And he opens it, tells us to shush, and then walks away. I really don't feel like we, we are that person, okay? I feel like, again, it's another past experience from somebody's memory. Uh, maybe Jeremy, uh, maybe one of the past children. Like I said... The game's been scanned um, with old chips and old memories and old data, okay? That could have just been another experience. This could even the be the safe room, who game, knows? All the, the whole mini games are just scanned experiences from chipboards. And that pizza party game where we get lured by him is just an experience, okay? Um, hand unit says when we're stuffed in a Freddy suit on stage that that's the end of the game. That was the last experience. It was just all a bit of fun. It, 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 that was designed to be in the game as a rumor experience, something that we can like play and be entertained and scared by. It was just a mini game, but I don't think it was meant to be the way it is. That mini game, yes, I think that mini game was intentional. But what's interesting is that Glitch Trap actually exits that mini game and he's dancing around. 
uh, yeah the, you know the party room that's what's area. interesting so it does seem like um glitch trap has got more control of this game than any of the other characters so we can actually get out the mini game and dance around and stuff it's pretty complicated basically um but yeah he's a virus at the end of the day he can do what he wants so yeah that pizza party game was just an experience like all of the other ones okay um I, i'm not going to talk too much about it because it's what the rumors are you get lured by um spring bonnie the, the spring bonnie costume and a kid gets murdered and stuffed into a freddy suit those were the rumors from the past games mm -hmm. rumors we know though though we know that actually happened remember that that did legit happen um but for fazbear entertainment are obviously trying to cover it up it's actually a pretty simple story if you get rid of all the complicated parts like the the safe room prison thing and some other stuff like the ending it would have been a really nice ending if we actually see glitch trap die that would have been don't. awesome that's what, that's what oh my god confused here because we spawn in a safe room and then we leave the leave the prison room and then he's as a plushie it would have been that's why i was so confused in my playthrough trap explode or you know we see him in pain and you know glitching and thanos like, snap fade away that's what i would want to see because i still don't know if he's dead or not and i don't think many of you guys do either because we haven't seen him die well i got no clue <laughs> turn into a glitchy spring bonnie plushie and that's it so I actually don't think the ending's done yet. Uh, I think Steel Wall they are updating it. Do DLC in the future. Oh my god, I'm going to buy the thing right away. Continues the story what's going to happen. Okay, I don't think I don't think he's dead yet. I still think there's some form of him in the game, maybe like crushed inside that uh, Bonnie plushie and we've got to find a way to destroy it in the future for future updates. And that's basically it. Here's my thoughts um, about the Barney plushie. I know, we're almost done, and I'm still talking. Just hang in there. Um, I think the reason why the Swing Barney plushie even exists is we still have all the tapes. Like, those aren't destroyed, and because Glistrap is linked to the tapes, and because they're still there, he is still present in the game. But because we've, you know rebooted the game and flipped the switch and the music and all that stuff he doesn't he's not as powerful as he used to be so he's gone but since he's still attached to the tapes he's still there but because he's lost basically all of his power he is condensed down into the swing bonnie plushie it's kind of what darko was saying um but just adding in adding in the tapes because i do think the tapes and glitch trap are connected so much they really are connected so much because ever since the, the very start of the game when we human beings in real life boot up help wanted and we get our first tape he is he's there he's already there that's because he was linked to it in the past before we humans were able to play help wanted so ever since we have been able to play help wanted he's been there and since the tapes are still there at the very end, a little bit of glitch trap is also still remaining. Yeah. Some other interesting uh, questions for you guys to think about before I end it is if Tape Girl wanted the tapes to be hidden, why are they around the location very easily to pick up? You see one, you pick it up. Why are they not hidden? They're not hidden, guys. They're all over the game. She could have just put them in a folder somewhere, never to be seen by the player. It's interesting how she didn't want people hmm. to get the tapes to put him back together, but at the same time, the tapes are around the location. That, that I can't answer. I think, guys, my opinion on that is that Glitch Trap is in the tape files, and I think Glitch Trap intentionally put those tapes around. He intentionally that's that's not bad. I, I like that. I do like that. Play the game for him to possess us, uh, because you know he gets his final form. He's back together. That makes he sense. Us, I like that. He wins, but obviously that doesn't happen. So I'm going to do one final summary in detail and explain. Right. My Pay attention. To summarize, Cornell notes. Talked about. 
so you guys just get a basic idea on what this story is about, okay? This game takes place after Five Nights at Freddy's 6, when all of the animatronics and Springtrap and everybody's dead, including Henry. Wait. Everything's gone, there's no more, is what we thought. Fazbear Entertainment is still a business and it's still active. Somebody's still running the company. They want to keep the company running now as a fresh new start, probably. Brand new, fresh start. <laughs> oh, Everybody's gone. Let's hope. Henry's gone. It's over with. Let's start the company again. Let's hire an indie developer to make a bunch Phase of games two. about what's happened. That goes wrong. People get curious what's happened in the past. Why were the kids murdered? Are these actually true or is it a game? It adds a negative issue for Fazbear Entertainment to deal with. And the business starts to struggle really, really bad. They panic, so they decide to get a VR game made by Silver Parasol Games to discredit everything, including those past games, and lie and say, this indie developer is a liar. Nothing happened. None of it's true. And then the VR game's made to cover that all up. Because the business is failing really, really bad now, and it's about to go bankrupt, they decide to speed up the process for Silver Parasol Games by sending them the data chips that they've found in the old locations and stuff like that. Um, and they give them the data chips, and the company can easily scan the data chips to speed up the process because they have lots of... Um, they have the animatronic blueprints, the location blueprints, like memories of the locations, all that jazz, all in the chips, to be then transferred into the game to speed things up a lot faster. But doing that actually reveals what I just said about the company um, hiring an indie developer to make these games beforehand, and the VR game was made to discredit everything, but they also had the virus the negativity, virus, the darkness of Glitch Trap, aka William Afton. Whether it's William Afton's full spirit or just a dark piece of him, it's William Afton's virus inside the game now. The virus tries to um, communicate with the first tester of the game, which was Jeremy. He succeeds in doing that over time, um, making him, you know, crazy doing weird things in, around the company. Been wearing these headphones for a long time. And masks and all that jazz. But eventually, um, Glitch Trap fails and Jeremy kills himself because he's too far gone. Glitch Trap's about to possess him and do some really bad things in the real world in this lore, okay? G imagine the things what Glitch Trap would do uh, while possessing somebody. Glitchtrap needs to get out to escape the game and do more bad things. This is like, this is probably worse than William Afton. <laughs> this is like the virus, the, the darkest part of William Afton in full form now. Imagine what he would do around the world. Just start killing people and killing kids, you know? So it, Jeremy does not want that to happen. Start, so I think you mean himself. continue. He doesn't actually kill um, Glitchtrap by doing that though. Glitch Trap is still in the game. Type Girl finds out about this, tries to kill it, but fails to do so, makes the logs. Glitch Trap goes into the logs because it's a safe place, because it's hidden and it's safe and it can't be removed from the game now. But instead, that's actually Type Girl's advantage because she fragments the log files into 16 different pieces, splitting Glitch Trap up. I gotta go shut up my dogs. Oh my god, we have less than two minutes left. They can't just be quiet for two more minutes. Splitting Glitch Trap apart so he can't do anything anymore. However, when the game is sent to this other company is what we are now. We're the beta tester in the game. Yay! Um, we find Yay him. us. We bring him back to his full form. He tries to possess us. He fails in doing so because Tape Girl tells us how to kill him. Dirt, 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 bish, bash, bosh. He's dead, okay? Or we think he's dead so far. We don't, don't know, know. what's going to happen next. But I do feel like he's not dead yet, and we've got to do something else in the future DLC, maybe. And that's basically a summary of Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted. Yay! So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think about the full story of this. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Um, remember what I said about the tapes being around the location? Did Glitch Trap purposely that, do that? That is a very good to question. The tapes to forge him down there, to forge him all together? Or um, do you think this is the ending as well? Do you think we've killed him? 
or do you think we haven't killed him? No. Think there's gonna be more DLC? I think there's going to be Let more. Let me know what you think about the summary. Thank you so much for the support. It took me a while to do all this research. I appreciate it, Lewis. This was holiday, awesome. But I'll do it for you guys, okay? Lots of love. Thanks for Love you. And I'll see you all next time. Oh, God. Oh, my camera died. <laughs> uh, you can still hear me, though, guys. Lots of love. Love you. And I'll see you all next time. What is this? Why is it suggesting cute and adorable? This has got to be from years and years ago. Whoa, <laughs> God. Why? Why? Happy Pride Month. Or Pride Day. Pride Month? I think I think it's the whole month. Yeah, my brother wrote that on there. Um, he was like, don't forget to say that. I was like, yeah, I, I won't. So, um, gay rights. Woo! Anyways, back to Help Wanted summary. Obviously... This was a long video to react to, and this video, my video is probably going to be longer, a little bit longer, maybe like 10 minutes. I'd be surprised if it's over, actually I wouldn't be surprised if it's over an hour, seeing as how much I'm going to be talking now, and how much I talked during the video. But yeah, this was awesome, honestly. Lewis is such a great guy, I've been watching him for a long time now, I've always looked up to him, I still do. <laughs> clearly and it's just amazing to have him do this while he's on vacation remember that guys lewis is on vacation he has spent the last week and a half i guess grinding help wanted and now he's on vacation and he's still doing work for us his community which is just so so nice and He's such a great guy, honestly. Anyways, I'm gonna stop, <laughs> stop complimenting him, and move on to um, the help wanted theories and all that stuff. I love this. I love this video so much. I love it so much. <laughs> it's gonna save me so much research time um, when I come to write my theories. But um, I am working on theory, like I said at the start of the video. It's not about. I mean, it's kind of about that. But after watching this video, I do think I'm gonna try and create a video my own of my own explaining my thoughts on um what lewis was talking about but i'm gonna do it in my way like he said he didn't make that a theory video he used facts and when there wasn't a definite answer he he told us like hey there's not an answer yet but in my video because it'll be a theory video it'll be under the name of the fnaf theories that i'm doing I will put out what I think it is. Of course, I'll say, you know, th it doesn't say this, but what I think it means is this. So, like, for example, what he used at the end, why are the tapes scattered around everywhere? I, of course, like I said, didn't have an answer, but Lewis's guess is a pretty good one, so I'll say that, because, like, well, you know, Lewis had a great idea there. So, it, it'll be like that sort of thing. It's super dark. I should turn on my lights. That didn't really help at all. But anyways, again, this video is absolutely incredible. I highly, highly suggest you watch it, um, especially if you are confused about the the lore of Help Wanted, which if you're watching this video and hear me, <laughs> hear me say that, then you should already know what it's about, seeing as hopefully you watch the entire thing. Um, and if you didn't, what's wrong with you? You kind of just skip to the end. Who does that? You're you're a really weird person. But yeah, this video, amazing. I cannot wait for more people to make more theories. I can't wait to see Matt Pat uh, make his theories about the game, because you know he he's freaking Matt Pat. You know he knows a lot of stuff about FNAF. And now that I'm done with the game and I have seen all the endings I'm gonna go through and watch other people's reactions because it's always fun to watch that I actually um, just finished recording a video with my brother of him playing Help Wanted so hopefully that should be up in the next few days maybe I'm not sure but yeah this video I love it so much it had such great evidence and even though it was long I feel so so happy I I feel like it was meant to be longer because Darko explained everything in great detail. Like, honestly, he did a fantastic, phenomenal job describing all the tapes, Glitch Trap, 
um, Dale, Jeremy, all those people. It's just, it's crazy the amount of research and work he did into this video. And I'm so glad, glad, I'm so glad that he made it. And it's just, again, Help One is such a great game. I know I've had loads of talks about it in the past in my full playthrough of it, you know, saying, oh, it's such a great game, you know, no wonder why it's the best-selling VR game on Steam, which, by the way, it is, go look it up, <laughs> which is such a great title for a FNAF game to hold. Because, again, 2014, we had no idea it was going to be this big. And seeing it now, it's really, really awesome. And I love it so much. I love the series so much. I love Dark so much. I love you guys so much. Scott and Lionsgate and Steel Wool, amazing people. Amazing game. And I love it so much. Anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough. This video, um, Darko's video is linked down below. Go watch it by yourself so you don't have to listen to me talk over it the entire time. But hopefully you guys did enjoy my reaction to it. And look forward to my theories on Help Wanted coming, hopefully, pretty soon. So thank everyone so much for watching, and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye!